what is going on guys horcrux here and welcome back to the channel so before we get into the bread and butter of today's video a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members without whom i could not be doing this so i really appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart so if you want to help actually support the channel the best way to do so is with a like and sub but if you want to go one step further i do have youtube memberships enabled as well as a patreon which includes pvp coaching access to private discord channels yada yada huh? a lot of bgs and giveaways and pvp with me and yada yada well, what i'm trying to say is there's plenty of ways to support the channel so all that's out there now disclaimer i don't know what happened to my footage for this i recorded for three and a half hours i got some banger of clips i got a 1v4 i even got a 1v5 i had to cut a lot but um just in the very short amount of time i was able to run this and i i, I don't know what happened to the clip I, I i really don't know so i could toss up some bg footage but it really doesn't hit the same. So um, we're just going to go over the build and try to keep it short. And I will be running this on stream either today or tomorrow. Tomorrow's community day for Pokemon Go. So I will not be doing that. We have to get Walrein's community day moves. Because it's going to be an absolute monster in the Great Battle League, Ultra League, and also the Master League. Um, yeah, I'll stop nerding out. So let's, <laughs> let's get into uh, the build again. I'll, I'll try to keep it short as possible. So here's our character sheet completely unbuffed on the front bar as well as the back bar. So if we want to uh, fully buff up here on the front bar, we're looking at around 4,000 spell damage with 44k max mag on our front bar. Back bar, we're at almost 30k resistances and 25k resistances. Now this is a really poly only sork build, but it's built to where you can take a hit with your shields down as well. We are not prioritizing maximum magicka per se. Our maximum magicka on the back bar is actually not bad. It's at 47,000. Um, which is very respectable we're at over 2k rico with continuous attack this will dang near hit uh 2500 so you don't have no problems with the magic of sustain whatsoever stamina recovery is not even bad at all because even though it's only 600 look how much that roll dodge costs it costs like nothing when you rock, rock all well fitted with the roly poly Oli build your stamina sustain is going to be absolutely phenomenal so for this class we are a Brett. Actually, no, I lied. We are a High Elf. Yes, yes. Wh wherever that is located. I actually don't know where to find it on this. But yeah, I, I swear to God we're in High Elf for this one. Okay, we're running the Atronach Mundus with Bewitch Sugar Skulls, which is just best in slot, in my opinion, on really any build. Uh, I mean, there's some niche builds out there. But um, sets-wise, on the front bar, you can run whatever offensive set that you run. But I run Mines, and War Maiden makes your Mines hits like a freight train man like war maiden is such a slept on set it gives you crit which is very important for the sorcerer you can see max magic it gives you spell damage and then the five pieces will give you 600 weapon spell damage for your magic damage abilities and pretty much everything we do is magic damage on this um frags haunting curse uh daedric trickery or uh, excuse me daedric mind build elemental weapon uh, the only thing that's not is power overload and yes i know i know i spotted overload i know i said i was never gonna do it but I was running a dual wield mag sork build prior to this using the exact same sets but uh, with a dual wield variant. And I, you can run this dual wield, okay? You can definitely run this dual wield as well. But you're going to run into those instances where it's really hard to close that kills unless you're right up on top of them. Um, because you need to lie attack with your, uh, your swords. The good thing about running overload is it actually... You don't have to be within melee range. You can light attack, LA weapon, light attack, LA weapon, and then that um, elemental weapon proc will be applied to your overload ranged attack. So you can run this dual build as well. I had a lot of fun running it. Um, it is a higher skill cap build if you want to run dual wield. Uh, you do do slightly more damage with the passes, plus you have access to two traits instead of just one, whereas if you're running Inferno Staff, but um that's entirely up to you and your play style again dual is really really fun but you do need a lot of mobility you gotta streak a lot you gotta pop your lightning form a lot just to stay up on people but uh i found because i'm on controller it's much more consistent for me to use an inferno staff so there's that back bar we're actually running the Melsham's perfected resto staff now i consider running willpower here as well because we are running a five piece body and you guys probably guessed it it's crafty right so the back bar is just uh the perfected maelstrom you don't need the perfected one um when you cast rapid regen on the build you will get 550 magic back this can only happen once come to find out i didn't really read into this today but yeah you cannot get consecutive procs of magic back but it is pretty good because your rapid regen costs like 2200 
So every time you cast it, you'll 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 get you'll get a crit. So it's taking 500 off of that, you know, giving you 500 back. So it's not too bad. And then you gotta run the escapist poison. Uh, these are phenomenal. Uh, I forget how to make these offhand. Uh, I'll leave a pinned comment, or if someone wants to comment down in the comment section how to make these, then I will pin that comment so you guys will know. Now the mythic I'm running is Gaze of Sippet. Um, it is arguable you can run a uh, Death Dealer's Fate, but the thing is, I wanted to make a build that can take a hit when your shields are down. So, you see on our back bar, we got 30k resistances and 26k physical resist. You can more than comfortably survive a Donnie spin to win or a Spectral Boat in cap with uh, 29k health and these resistances with a crit resist. So, if you want to go Death Dealer's Feet, um, you will have a bigger shield. You go up to about 50k maximum magicka on your back bar, so your wards will be a little beefier. But if you're caught with your pants down, and you do not have you know your shields up you're, you're going to hit hard all right so gaze of sith is there for this i don't block it all on this build again this is roly poly oly and we have crafty on the body i'm running a five wolf fit and two impen right now um you can change your armor weight tower or your armor traits however you want um on sithis i i feel that 27k health on my front bar is okay and then back bar i have a, like 29k health I feel that this health pool is um, more than manageable. If you want to add a little bit more health, a little bit more stamina sustain, you can put tri glyphs on your head and also your legs uh, if you wanted to. I just have them as max magic because I feel like I don't really need it. And again, I'm running two impan and five bull fitted because this is a roly poly oly build. And then on the jewelry, we're running crafty as well. So we're main. Oh yeah, Dommy House. Um, if you run Death Dealer's Fate. Um, I don't know if you run this build, you can get your full Undaunted because you have to use um, one of these slots for a Death Dealer's Fate, which frees up uh, this slot. But in this slot, you'd have from Crafty or War Maiden, which is Line Armor. And then the only thing you're left with is one monster slot. So you will be missing out on your Undaunted if you're on Death Dealer's Fate, which kind of offsets your massive magic at health and stamina. It, 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 it's up to you. I just think Gaze of Sith is just better. Okay. Um, let's get into the skills. So everything, pretty much we, what we do is magic damage. So we got Crystal Frags, a Haunting Curse, a Daedric Minefield, guys. If you're not running this, please give it a try. Daedric Minefields hit so incredibly hard. It, it is such a hard-hitting ability. And if you get hit with a couple of these, it's 15k on tool to, you know, this this can crit. Like, if you roll through two or three of these, your, your ass is grass. You're just dead. All right, I know it costs a lot, but if you can find a choke point like this, this skill is absolutely amazing for 1vx. Now, if you're in a group, yeah, you know, you probably won't go with more damage. But if you're 1vxing, you absolutely need the utility. You may notice we do not have an execute. I hate this execute. It is so bad on so many levels. It doesn't do enough damage. The debuff doesn't get applied during a roll dodge. It's a wonky cast animation. And quite frankly. Like, half the time I have this and I go into burst someone, it procs, it still doesn't kill them. So I much rather go for the utility that mines provide rather than having this dog crap of an execute. Okay, that's just personally me. So I do run a line of spell drop pause, which gives me crit on the front bar. So yeah, it's you can slide execute by all means, but I, I personally hate that skill with an undying passion. Um, we have Ellie weapon again this is our spammable this always applies a stats effect so there's no reason to run charge hence while we're running sharpen on the front bar which i forgot to go over it is sharpen and defending on the back bar um ultimate again you can run whatever you want here you can run meteor uh you can run a frank um i personally because i was running dual wield, i needed a little bit of a crutch to get those kills this is amazing for dual wield I think you can get away with not running power overload um, if you're using an Inferno Staff, but that's entirely up to you. But this is hard, even though it's not considered magic damage, it still does a lot of pressure. All right. So back bar, running Bound Aegis. Now you, this is our flex spot. You do not necessarily have to run Bound Aegis. Uh, this does give you maximum health, gives you maximum magic, make your wars beefier, and it also gives you spell resistances on your back bar, which makes you even more tankier when you're turtling up. But if you need a little bit more utility, you can toss on Dark Conversion, um, it's a really good skill, but I feel that I was never running out of Magicka, so what's the point, you know? Um, we are uh, using two wards for this one, um, using Boundless Storm, and then we have Rapid Regeneration on our back bar, you know, so tool tooltips already 2100 on buff, so yeah, this this build's pretty awesome. Now we have Life Giver, it's very important with Life Giver 
that you actually have your ability slotted because every time you or uh, morph excuse me so when you toss on life giver it's going to use the morph of these now if you use combat prayer you actually get minor berserk so you can actually technically go offensive with life giver if you think you can burst someone uh, with your with your combo so uh it's entirely up to you just be sure you have these morph anyway just so you can get the added benefits of life giver now let's go over the champion points uh, again we're using line spell drop potions but if you need um, help with your sustain or what have you, um, you can slot tricep potions as well. Entirely up to you. Champion points. So in the blue tree, this one's uh, arguable. Um, two for sure DPs you need is Deadly Aim, Mastered Arms, and Duelist Rebuff. Now, you can change... The, I have Arcane Supremacy here, but you can actually change this to Ironclad. Um, that's entirely up to you. I just want a little bit more max and magic, but uh, Ironclad is also a good alternative for your blue CP. Uh, you can also run Fighting Finesse if you really want to go all in on your crit, but since I'm not running the Sigic Order skill line, we don't have the crit damage bonus from Race Against Time, so I fear, nah, you know. So, we go over into Blue Tree. Now this one, since this is a Roly Poly Oli build, you kind of have to spec into it this way when we're running double wards. And there, there, there's really no way around it, to be honest, if you want to have enough uh, stamina sustain notice we're only running a pain's refuge in this tree now these passes is also really good relentlessness is really good sustained by suffering is also really good but if you want to run this build to where you can roll dodge pretty much infinitely you want to run shield master bastion and also arcane alacrity arcane alacrity is the bread and butter of this build because whenever you have a ward active your roll dodge just costs like nothing look at this i can i can probably roll dodge seven times it's three four five six seven can we squeeze out eight yeah we, we, we can roll dodge eight times in a row without popping a potion okay so um, that's why arcane alacrity is so so good just pop a ward immediately roll dodge okay just be sure if you're going to be roll dodging a lot that you're in between your roll dodges you're applying a ward right uh, go over to the green tree really not much to mention here just war mount gift rider and if you're using expensive potions liquid efficiency is uh, very nice as well and yeah, that about does it for the build. Apologies for not having clip, guys. I swear they was there. I just want to get this build video out there. I will be streaming this either today or Monday. Just to show you guys this in action. I'll also upload the VOD just so you guys can go back and take a look at it. I may even make a highlight section of it as well. Again, apology. I don't know why I didn't record. Uh, I don't know. O OBS has been really screwy lately. I, I, I don't have an excuse for it. Just throw your boy horcrux a bone on this one i would not release a really shitty build okay so yeah this is it again if you guys want to help support the channel have youtube memberships patreon also if you have pvp top five clips please submit them to horcrux eso at yahoo.com or just drop them in the discord and i really want to make a montage going into next week i know me koro we've not really been doing a lot of that um yeah, so we'll, we'll pick up the pace, guys. We'll make PvP great again. Um, this has been Horcrux. Thank you guys for tuning in, and have a great rest of your evening. Peace. <laughs>